Hi everyone, today I will be showing you the steps you can follow to achieve this cool augmented reality effect. We will be creating a smartphone app concept today, but keep in mind that the upcoming techniques are not limited to this scenario and can be applied in so many other creative ways. Today's video is made possible thanks to Acer's Concept D. I'm using the Concept D7 model today and I'll be sharing with you some of my favorite features of this laptop and why I think it's a great choice for handling all sorts of intensive creative projects. Obviously, the first thing we need before we start editing is a short clip like this one. Make sure the subject is in focus and it helps if there's enough depth of field to separate the subject from your background. We will need to track the surface of the phone in After Effects and that becomes much easier if we add some tracking markers on the surface. I simply downloaded a tracking image and displayed it on my phone screen but you can simply draw some marking dots on small stickers which you can then place on the subject. Now that we have the filming part sorted out, let's bring the clip over to Adobe After Effects. Now drag the clip and drop it over this icon here to generate a new composition and this way our composition's duration, resolution and other properties will automatically match those of our footage. The composition will also show up under the project tab. Let's select it and hit enter to rename it. Next, with the footage layer selected, let's go to layer, pre-compose. I'm going to call this one phone. Let's open it up. I'm simply going to be prepping for the tracking inside this composition. So with the footage layer selected, let's change to the pen tool and draw a mask around the phone. You can leave a margin and you don't need to perfectly match the mask edges to those of the phone. I'm simply trying to eliminate the majority of the background here to make sure the tracking process is more focused on the phone itself. Now keep in mind that you need to make sure that the mask follows the movement of the smartphone. So let's open up the mask properties and enable the stopwatch on the mask path. You notice that a new keyframe has been created here, which means the current mask path is locked at this timecode. And to animate it along the video, skip ahead a few seconds forward and readjust the mask to follow the smartphone's orientation and since the stopwatch is enabled, any new changes on the mask path will be registered inside a new keyframe. Let's skip a few seconds forward once again and repeat the same thing all the way to the end. What I like to do here is go back right between the created keyframes and make sure the mask follows the object properly. If not, then simply adjust the mask path as many times as needed. Once you're done with the mask animation, increase the mask feather a bit. If you feel like you've masked too much or too little of the clip, you can also play around with the expansion. Otherwise, you can move ahead with the tracking. So back to the main composition with the phone composition layer selected. Go to the effects tab, look for 3D camera tracker and simply drop it on the layer to start processing. It usually takes a few seconds to process depending on the complexity of your footage. Once it's over, you will notice new colored tracking points were added on the phone surface and yes, these are just temporary and won't show up in your final render. And if you hover between these points, you will get these target planes that are generated out of three different points. Simply look for one that's more aligned and parallel to the surface of the tracked object. You can skip ahead a few seconds if needed. I think this one looks good enough, so let's right click on it and choose create solid and camera. And now as you can see, we've generated a new tracking solid out of those tracking points, as well as a new camera, which will allow us to view certain things in 3D. The solid is still not perfectly aligned to my screen, so let's press R to reveal its orientation properties. Let's try and adjust the Z rotation value. Let's have a look. I think that's good enough, even though it still looks a bit off, but you really don't want to play around much with its properties here. Otherwise, you risk having the solid shift from its original tracking position. I want to rename this to screen track. And next thing you need to do here is scale the solid up until it covers the entire screen, just like this. 
You can also press on T and change the layer's opacity to 50%. This way you can double check that it's still tracking properly. Cool, it looks good for me here and we don't really need the background mask anymore. So let's go back to the phone composition and switch the masks mode to none. Great, uh, let's go back to the main composition. Now what I want to do here is reshape the track solid and match it to my mobile screen. So select the screen track layer, click and hold on the rectangle mask, switch to the rounded rectangle tool and draw a mask around the smartphone. Obviously it's still misaligned so unfortunately we'll need to do some manual refinements and tracking here. So switch to the selection tool to be able to move the corners of the mask individually and simply match them to the corners of the screen. It looks way better now, but we still need to check if the mask needs realignment at other parts of the video. So once again, enable the stopwatch on the mask path. Let's move a few seconds forward, right around here. The mask is clearly shifting, so let's adjust the corner. Let's double check the other corners. It's also misaligned, so let's fix that and continue doing the same thing every few seconds. I'm using a two second interval between my keyframes here, and I usually go back halfway between my keyframes to check if I need to do any further adjustments. The less keyframes I can use, the smoother my mask animation will be. And although we did use a camera tracker here to cut down on manual work, but it rarely delivers perfect results by itself. And this refinement is almost always necessary. So keep that in mind. One more thing to note here is that in case of other elements covering the screen, you can always use the vertex tool to add or delete new points to your mask for more complex shapes. And the convert vertex tool allows you to add curves whenever you need to get rid of sharp corners. Next, let's increase the feather a tiny bit. I think three pixels is just enough. And also, it's now time to bring the opacity back all the way up. Great, we're pretty much past the tracking and manual refinement here. So now, let's move to the fun part of the video and work on the augmented reality visuals. I will start with the apps background, so create a new composition. You can call it background. You can set any resolution you want here, but it helps if you go with an aspect ratio that matches the ratio of your actual phone's display. I've already set up mine before this recording, so I will stick with this resolution and click OK. I'm gonna import these galaxy wallpapers to create the background, but you can go with pretty much any kind of wallpapers here. Drag and drop to import. Let's add all of them inside our newly created composition. You'll see why I'm using three different images here in just a minute, so bear with me. Let's make this one a bit smaller real quick to match the other images. Now I want the background to have some sort of volume and dimension to it instead of using a simple flat image to achieve that parallax effect. First let's switch all layers to 3D and the next major step here is to place the layers on completely different depth positions. For example, press P to reveal the first layer's position properties and decrease the Z value to push the layer further from our point of view. Let's pull up the position for the other two layers as well. And to completely understand what's going on here, let's add a second view so we can see our layers from a different angle. I've selected the second layer here and this time Let's push this one on the Z axis towards the back. You can see on the default view that because of its new position, it doesn't fill the entire composition any longer. And we can compensate for that by scaling the layer back up. And now let's do the same thing for the third layer. Notice that you can adjust its position directly from the viewer or by changing its Z coordinate value from the position property down here. And again, scale it back up to match the other two layers above it. Let's switch to the orbit tool real quick. So now that we've placed each image on a different position, we should witness some sort of a parallax effect when changing the view angle. But because they are still stacked on top of each other in the timeline with 100% opacity, we can only see the image that's all the way on top. But there's a quick and easy fix for that thanks to the blending modes. 
change the top layers blend mode to soft light and the second one to overlay let's have a look now this is exactly the look i had in mind however it's a bit too vibrant and i'd like to tone the colors down a bit so let's add a new adjustment layer in the effects tab look for hue saturation double click to add it and let's bring the saturation down okay much better and don't forget to switch the adjustment layer to 3d as well now let's go back to our main composition and bring the background right below the screen tracker switch it to 3d i want to move the background to the same position of the screen so let's simply pull up the screen track position and orientation properties and by the way you can pull up different properties together by holding down shift and pressing the respective shortcuts so here i hold shift and then press p and then r now select both position and orientation together Control c to copy select the background layer and press Control or command v to paste enable collapse transformation to be able to see the transformation data on 3d layers inside the composition in our case that's simply so we can see the parallax effect which we created inside i actually missed out on the z rotation here so let's copy that over there we go now obviously you want the background to be within the smartphone only so change the track map to alpha and by doing that we're using the layer above our background as a mask let's give it a quick preview beautiful it's still out of place here so let's slide it back on the y-axis i guess we can also skate it up to fill the screen let's see awesome notice that we can still see a bit of the original green background but no biggie uh, keep in mind that you can always go back and adjust the mask to make sure the screen is always fully covered all right now we're done with the background and we can focus on the interface i'm going with a music app design that i customized in photoshop beforehand once again i set up my documents aspect ratio to match the ratio of my phone's display the psd file is available for download in the description below and it's set up in a way that you can move every single major element individually and customize the text layers as well so feel free to use that but I'm also confident that by the time we go through the interface part in After Effects, you'll be able to apply the same techniques on pretty much any graphics of your choice. Now, as many of you know, I use Adobe After Effects excessively in my creative projects. This amazing piece of software is all about adding high-end visual effects to your videos and relies heavily on the memory and the central processing unit of your computer. The Concept D7 comes equipped with powerful hardware, including an Exacore CPU unit and optimized thermals, which makes running After Effects and rendering videos incredibly smooth and responsive. The device also comes with an NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics card, which means it can handle intensive video editing, animation, and 3D rendering. Back to the tutorial so let's go back to ae right click here and choose import file select the photoshop interface file do not enable photoshop sequence but make sure you switch this to composition retain layer sizes and click import as you can see after effects has generated a new composition out of the imported psd file inside of which you can find all the photoshop layers with the same structure and order preserved first of all let's switch all these layers to 3d so right now if we use the orbit tool to have a quick look around you can see that the interface is pretty much flat and there's no depth at all and in order to achieve the augmented reality effect you want to give the illusion that some elements are sitting right on the surface of the screen while others are floating either on the side or a bit higher and that's what we're gonna work on but before that let me show you real quick how to recreate the music waveform which you've seen in the final video first delete the original waveform layers as we don't need those create a new solid set it to any color you want let's call this waveform switch over to the pen tool let's hide the layer for now but keep it selected and draw a line wherever you wish the waveform skeleton to be this looks good for me right here don't forget to switch this to 3d re-enable the layer 
Now look for an effect called audio waveform and add it in. Change the form to mask. You won't see any waveforms at this stage and that's simply because we don't have any music track in our composition. So go ahead and import a soundtrack of your choice. You can slide it in the timeline to pick whichever section you want to use to generate the audio waveform. Let's listen. I think I like this part. So now go back to the waveform effect and change the audio layer to the newly added music track. And you should be able to see the waveform animation. We can still customize it further. I'm gonna change its color to this yellow. Same thing for the outside color. Let's increase the maximum height. Maybe I'll increase the audio duration as well as the thickness. Let's see. Nice. I'm happy with this look. Let's duplicate the layer to create a smaller version of it. Rotate this and place it on the side here. I want this one to be smaller, so let's shorten the mask. Change both colors to something else. I'll go with white this time. Maybe we can add a few more samples. Reduce the height and the audio duration because I want this one to animate a bit faster. Bring the thickness down to two or so. Let's have a look. Okay, great. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and place the interface on top of our smartphone and see what that looks like. Obviously, we don't need the black background now. So let's go back and disable that layer back to the main composition. And just like we did with the background comp, switch the interface to 3D, enable collapse transformation, and then copy all position and orientation from the screen track solid and paste it over on the interface layer. It seems to be tracking just fine, but it's not properly positioned. It's safe to move the layer on the X or Y axis and scale it up as needed. If you feel like the orientation is still off, like my case here, you can always adjust it slightly. I think it looks fine in most parts, but it does fall apart a bit later in the video. In this case, there is nothing wrong with keyframing the rotation to make sure the interface matches the perspective of the screen during the entire video. I guess I'll adjust the Y rotation here a bit more. Nice. I think the small waveform on top is a bit too close and overlaps with the form too much. So let's go inside the interface composition and move it a bit towards the left. You can also bring its opacity down to 50%. Another thing you can do here is feather the edges of the main waveform a bit. I have already created the mask for that in Photoshop, so all you need to do is change the track mat to alpha. There we go. At this stage, we can focus on the parallax part. As I mentioned, we want some graphic elements to appear as if they are floating above the smartphone screen. And to do that, we will need to change the position of some layers on the Z-axis. A simple rule of thumb in this scenario is that the layers which have the Z position value set to zero will be placed directly on the screen surface, while those who have a Z position value that's smaller than zero will be floating a bit higher than the screen. So let's apply that. For example, I want the timer to be floating, so let's decrease its position on the Z axis down to 138. There we go. We have a parallax effect now. So let's apply it on the other layers. I'll move it a bit further first. Next, let's do the same thing with the title, giving it the same Z position value and the same exact thing with the cover. Cool. What else? Uh, I guess we can do it with the audio waveform as well as its mask. Let's check and see. Perfect. Obviously, you can go with uh, different levels here where some elements are higher than the others. Now that you understand the fundamentals, you can get as creative as you want. Let's see how that looks like on the main composition. Awesome, the AR effect is there, but there are a few more things we can do here to make it even cooler. For instance, we can add a glow effect on the interface, bring the radius up to 74 or so, the intensity to 2.4. Gonna check the difference real quick. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks really good this time around let's duplicate the screen track solid rename it to outline glow unhide the layer and by the way the next effect 
I'm gonna use here doesn't come with After Effects by default, but you can download it from Video Copilot for free. It's called VC Saber. Double click to add it in. First thing I'm gonna do here is change the glow color. I think I like this one. Obviously I wanna remove the black background and to do that, go to render settings, change the composite settings to transparent and then go to customize core and change the core type to layer masks. And just like that, we created a cool futuristic glow outline around the smartphone. It still needs further adjustments as you can see. Let's bring the glow intensity down to 30%, decrease the glow spread so it no longer reaches the layer edges. And let's also decrease the core size to make it a bit thinner, much better like this. I think this outline is a really cool extra touch and it also helps with hiding any remaining masking imperfections around the screen. Looking at this preview, it appears to me that one of the star layers in the background can be pushed in a bit more further from our view. So let's go to the background composition and change the Z position value to something greater than zero. Let's have a look. Okay, perfect. Uh, now it's pretty obvious that the depth of field in our original footage is pretty shallow. And as my hands move, some parts of the phone become out of focus. So applying the same thing on the digital interface would make things even more realistic and interesting. All we have to do to achieve that is open up the camera properties and look for depth of field. It's off by default, so switch that on. There isn't any noticeable difference now, so increase the aperture to 50 or so and the blur level to 430. Please keep in mind that you might have to use different values in your project, so play around with the settings until you achieve a blur level that's quite similar to what you have in your real footage. And finally, let's shift the focus distance till the interface is sharp again, or in other words, back in focus. As you can see now, especially at this angle, we've replicated the depth of field on this interface as well, which helps with blending both reality and digital interface in a much more convincing way. Once you're done with that, select the phone footage, add a brightness and contrast effect. Let's increase both brightness and contrast up. At this stage, we can do some color grading and give the scene a bit of a cinematic look. And speaking of color grading, the Concept D7 comes with a 4K narrow bezel display that features integrated color correction. The display is Pantone validated, which ensures that it provides true to life colors. Color accuracy is essential for many professionals working in the creative field. So this really sets the laptop apart from many of its competitors. Back to the tutorial, let's add a new adjustment layer. Under Effects tab, look for Lumetri. Now clearly color grading is not the main focus of this tutorial, so I'm gonna do some quick tweaking here to keep things simple. You can always copy my settings, but if you're using another clip that was shot in different conditions, I advise you to go with the adjustments that work best for your scenario and don't be afraid to experiment in order to achieve the look you have in mind and develop your signature style. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned at least one new technique today. If you did and would like to take your hologram and AR related skills even further, check this video out. Otherwise, here's another After Effects tutorial that you might find useful. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Other than that, stay safe, make sure you follow your passion, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.